So over the last several weeks, maybe even several months if we think about it, though it's been broken up with some new product, we've really taken quite the trip down the lane of Transformers Animated. And most recently we did a Megatron week where we looked at the Voyager class Cybertronian Megatron as well as the later class Earth mode Megatron. And that was followed up by an Optimus Prime week where we looked at the Deluxe class Cybertronian Optimus Prime and, yes, the Voyager class Earth mode Optimus Prime. And then that brings us to today. What a way to kind of top off a look at animated Optimus and Megatron than by way of a two-pack, a two-for-one. Both of these are deluxe, which means they're not really going to scale perfectly with each other. And yes, we have an Earth mode and a Cybertronian mode, but this is the two-pack for Battle Begins, Transformers Animated. That'll be our focus this time around in the latest Got By True review. Hey one hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, aka Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course subscribe, and while you are at it, light them up, baby. Hit that notification bell, please, as it helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that's in the description down below, also in the description down below, and if you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we have to offer to you through spring, or, of course, hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member. And this is a two-pack. Both are deluxe. Oddly enough, this battle would have never happened because this Earth mode was never in conflict, I guess you could say, with this Cybertronian mode. Um, are they good? Are they not? Let's find out together when we head over to the table and take a closer look at this duo. So across the last few months, we have taken a look back at many Transformers animated uh, offerings. And most recently we did a Megatron week where we looked at the Cybertronian Voyager class Megatron, which is fantastic, as well as the leader class Earth mode Megatron, which is also fantastic. Then we did an Optimus Prime week where we looked at the deluxe Cybertronian mode Optimus Prime, which is, yeah, you guessed it, pretty fantastic. Uh, though I do find the transformation chews me up a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. And we looked at the fantastic, I know I'm using the word fantastic a lot, Voyager class uh, animated Optimus Prime. No, I have not looked at the legacy. No, I don't know that mold, but I have heard good things about it. And that brings us to where we are today. What a way to top off a look at the animated Megatron and Optimus Prime by going to the Battle Begins 2-pack. These are Battle Damage Deluxe class versions of both of these guys. And you may notice that their stance is a little bit crouched. There's a reason for that, because if I don't crouch the stands and try and stand them up just straight, Megatron fails miserably. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Before we get into them, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this sheet of instructions. It's one side. We do not have the bio on the other side. It shows both transformations as well as accessory storage. I think that Megatron's accessory storage certainly works better than Optimus's because Megatron's really incorporates into the alt mode. What say we begin here with Optimus Prime who comes with his battle axe. By the way, I would say that this is the most animation accurate <clears throat> version of the battle axe that we've had. I have it in his arm down there, but I mean he can hold it, um, you know, obviously up correctly. I believe, can you dual wield the axe? Um, you probably could, but you'd have to really sort of finagle the arms to do it. But a beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous version of the axe, gigantic. We will see this uh, kind of slot in later on. Obviously, he can hold it in his hand. I don't necessarily see a spot to store it other than in his hand in robot mode. I'm not going to say that there isn't a location, but when I look at the instructions, I don't see one for robot mode, which is a little bit of a bummer, but I, I mean, not a deal breaker, right? Uh, in terms of the look of the guy, again, you'll notice we have some battle damage over here, so we're missing a couple of the yellow lights. There's some up here on his chest. Here's the thing, if your thought is, I'm going to get rid of the battle damage, like use some rubbing alcohol or something like that to take it off, uh, beware, because a lot of it, certainly on the chest, is also on over other paint. Like I think the chest, for example, is 
you know, translucent plastic, so if you take off the battle damage there, you're probably going to take off the paint with it, unless you're super duper duper careful. Uh, there's also some over here. In terms of accuracy to the cartoon model, it's pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. So starting from the feet and working our way up, like the black around the toes makes sense. Right here, here at the top of his toe, I really think that should be a yellow. Uh, the blue is correct, the thighs being gray is correct. The pelvis would be correct, except for the battle damage. Uh, the torso, pretty much correct. Um, do we have the black on the, we don't really have the black on the, we kind of have the black on the sides, but the sides, like his rib cage sort of isn't there. The grill is fine, uh, the chest is fine, uh, the gray under the chest, or silver if you will, under the chest, and the yellow lights, that's all fine. The head sculpt, that's fine. Um, the battle mask, unlike with the Voyager, doesn't move on this one. The blue on the arms is fine. I wish we had the yellow here on the kind of rectangle on the back of the hands. Uh, the red on the upper arms, that's fine, again, except for the battle damage. Even the Autobot logo, that's fine as well. I'm gonna say a solid I would say it's a solid, the tire shouldn't be there either up near his neck. I'll say a solid eight and a half for the look of the guy. Let's do the articulation. If you saw the Cybertronian uh, Deluxe class, then you're going to have a pretty good idea about this one. I will note now that with the axe in his hand, if you want, you can rotate the waist back and it springs forward, right? I mean, waist doesn't turn that way, but it does turn this way. I noted that because it's a feature and it's sort of, limits his waist articulation, but he does have waist articulation. It's really weird. Uh, okay, so the head. That can go left, right. Actually, I guess it can go all the way around, right? Um, it can go back a little bit, down quite a bit. The shoulders can go all the way around, out to the side. Uh, by the way, these smokestacks, they're not correct. They're more G1-ish. Uh, the arm can go folded up completely. That's cool. Um, do we have anything at the wrist? I don't think so. No, nah, um, well, we have in, but that's it at the wrist. I already talked about the waist, the hips, I mean, you know, the hips could be a bit better, not quite what I would want them to be, not bad, you'll get what you want, but uh, they could be a little bit better. Leg forward, leg way back, um, swivel at the knee, I guess thigh swivel, knee to 90 degrees, um, toe can go down, but no ankle tilt of any sort. Uh, I, again, much like I probably said with the uh, Cybertronian mode one, because this is similar to that, you know, everything is sort of there. The range of motion is pretty darn good. This one will score slightly lower because instead of having a full waist rotation, we have the, the gimmick thing that only goes like a quarter turn. So they sort of compromise the waist rotation for the gimmick. Uh, I, that's not cool with me. Um, I don't know. Most of what you want is gonna be there. I'm gonna say a nine. So right now he's getting an 8.75. Let's do the transformation to truck mode because why not? And um, yeah, well, I guess we'll talk about that and see what's, see what's similar and different from the um, Cybertronian mode version. So, where do I want to begin? I'm gonna begin by untabbing this gray tab from the torso, because hey, why not, and open out the chest. I'm going to fold up, um, no, sorry, I'm gonna fold that back, and now I'm gonna fold both of these up on the sides. I'm going to try and remember how to do this now. Um, fold these back on the side and we're going to fold in the hands here, fold up an arm, fold up an arm. Rotate that around and bring it up on the top and rotate this around so the smokestack is to the back and rotate it up on top, thusly. So like I said, it's not exactly like that deluxe, but it's kind of like that deluxe. Let me bend his knees so we can see the, the top of this as we're going here. Uh, we're going to take this backpack piece and this is going to come up and over uh, both of the arms on an armature kind of in right here. And then this is going to come up over the front and it will kind of be the thing that solidifies the entire front of the truck together, right? So it is not exactly like the um, Cybertronian Mode Deluxe because we don't have the 
you know, axe becoming the front or part of the axe, part of the shield becoming the front. These pieces back here flip to the side rather than flipping up. The head kind of stays where it's too. So it is a little bit different, but it's similar to that. Um, then we rotate the legs around here and we bring this waist up. We bring these toes down and we collapse the legs. I find this tight. In fact, I, uh, when I was practicing, I actually hurt my, um, hand a little bit uh, doing that because I kind of caught near my nail with the kneecap and it did not feel good. Trust me, it really did not feel good. Um, then we have the axe and the axe. Okay, so there's a couple of things. The axe goes plugged in right here, but it also plugs in on the two side of the, uh, sides of the legs and that'll sort of solidify the legs in place. So we take the translucent piece of the axe and it goes down right there and then using the two translucent pegs on the side they go into holes on the ankles I suppose you would say and then lastly to kind of make sure all of this is in place we want to make sure that the legs and these tabs here kind of all come together nicely thusly and boom in the end here we have Optimus in his truck mode more G1-ish then animated-ish because of the red down here. That should be black, kind of coming along right here for animated. Red is very more G1-ish. Plus, like I said, these smokestacks. By the way, um, I'm told that they can um, untab and come off and be like little blasters. They're, I find them pretty tight. Where this isn't mine, this is on loan to me by Maximal 10. I really don't want to kind of mess with it. But it's a great transformation. Rolls like a champion. He was getting an 8.75, I think the transformation's a 9, say a 9.75, overall this Optimus is like a 9.25, it's an excellent deluxe class Optimus. But then that brings us to the other half of the 2-pack. And that would be deluxe class Megatron, Cybertronian mode, deluxe class Megatron, and his battle damage is like pink on his shoulder and his chest and side of his face, it's weird. Uh, in terms of the look of the guy. So let's start from the bottom, work our way up. Why not? The pink, red, whatever you want to call it on the feet is correct, though there should be kind of a black edging like we had on Optimus. Uh, the gray just above the foot's correct at the ankle. Um, there should be, I don't think it's there. Oh no, the red is in here on the, the ankle piece there, so that's cool. Um, the lower legs being black or gunmetal gray, if you will. Gosh, he's so hard to get to stand. That's correct. The gray thighs, correct. The black or gunmetal gray at the waist, that's correct. The red on the rib cage is correct. The overall gray of the torso and tummy is correct. The Decepticon logo should be um, like a regular Decepticon logo, not gold. The head is a pretty excellent sculpt as well. Uh, the shoulders, the gray on those with the red detailing on the outside, that's correct. The red bicep, that's correct. The um, gray and black at the forearms and hands, that's all correct. And his fusion cannon, also quite correct, although these three uh, lines should be facing toward him, not away from him. And I think the leader class, if I'm not mistaken, that can actually turn around and face him to be animation accurate. But still, pretty darn great for animation accuracy here. I'm going to say that also, I think that this fusion cannon just plugging into his arm, it's simple, but I think it's the best looking of the three fusion cannons. I'm going to say oh, 9.75, other than the battle damage, this is really close to animation. Um, now, now comes the problem, now comes the articulation part of it, and you know, I got him in a bit of a pose here, and he has the articulation, but there's, a, there's an issue with it. Let's, let's get into it. So I'm going to straighten those legs. First things first. The head can go left and right, look up a little bit, not really much down. And the, the head is shaped such that you're not getting all the way around. You're just getting some left and right. The arms can go all the way around, out to the side a ton. The elbow is 90 degrees or better. Um, nothing at the wrist. And I, I will say this. If you put this out, like the arm can handle the weight of the fusion cannon, no problem. I'm going to unplug, unplug the fusion cannon now, though. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, then we have a waist on the guy, 
His waist, I guess, is the same thing. Like, it flicks back. But his waist can go all the way around, which is nice. The toes can go forward and back. The heel forward and back. No ankle tilt. Knee to 90 degrees. Leg can, legs can kick well forward. That's cool. Legs can kick well back. Now that's cool. They can go all the way out to the side. But watch this. No tension, like none, no tension whatsoever out to the side, though I do like that the hip skirts can move. Without his fusion cannon, he will begrudgingly stand up. It's still not easy, it's still not solid, but he'll do it. As soon as you put the fusion cannon on the arm, uh, we have kind of a major issue by way of the weight and his hips can't handle it. I was hoping it was just maximal tense copy, but apparently doing some research, it is a widespread issue. Bummer. The fusion cannon itself. Also, you'll notice we have the two blades here. You can split this open and bring uh, a blade off and down and close this back up. So you can do this if you want them to have a big blade on the side, but this doesn't come off. Like this doesn't detach. It doesn't do anything. It ju it's just here on the side of his fusion cannon, which I don't know. To me, it's like, why did you even bother then, right? So we're just gonna put that back up. I think that's the best way to just leave that. We'll see this again a little bit later with the transformation. Because of the weakness of the hips, I wanted to give the articulation here, honestly, about a 9.75. Because other than an ankle tilt, and I guess a wrist swivel, everything is here. Maybe I would have given it a nine and a half. But because the hips fail, with the fusion cannon, and because the fusion cannon is a pretty quintessential part of Megatron, I gotta say that the articulation, while it's all there, that's a huge failure and he really can't hold pose as well. It's gonna drop it to about a six. A big, big disappointment in the tolerances there. I mean, I guess you could thicken him up, but like, we're talking stock, right? So he had a 9.75 and a six. Right now the dude is getting somewhere around a, I don't know, let's say a seven and a half-ish right without doing the proper the proper math for an average let's do the transformation which i actually do like for this guy i just hope i can remember it uh, i really hope i can remember it let me make sure that i got him straightened up here and a lot of the magic for this is really in the legs i just want to confer with the instructions again there for a moment about something before i start doing this um, yeah, okay, so the arms, I guess, is where we will start. You take them out, and you turn them around, and you turn them around, just like that. And um, you fold, um, where's the elbow? You fold it up, and you bring it up over. Is that right? Did I do this right? No, I didn't do this right. It falls down. There we go. And here's how I know, because this rectangular peg should uh, go into this slot here. So bring that down. There we go. Turn this around. And same thing. I got to bring... Oh, done it the wrong way. Bring that down and in. By the way, you'll notice that there are like... I'm going to call them landing gear on the bottom there. So that's the arms done, kind of the upper body done really. Um, then we'll do, I guess, the lower body next, which isn't hard or anything, but um, I just wanna make sure I got everything oriented right. Okay, so we're going to turn a leg and turn a leg. We're going to open out the back of the leg and the back of the leg. We're going to bring the heel down and we're gonna bring that also down, bring the heel down, we're going to bring that down as well, and bring it in, thusly. Now, we're going to uh, bring this up and over. We're going to bring this up and over. Did I do this? Uh, yeah, I did do it the right way. We're going to snap these two. These were the panels that were behind the legs. We're going to snap those together. We're going to take his um, shin, I suppose, which kind of pushed itself out uh, by a bit of an automorph and bring that back and tab together and bring all that back together like that. We're going to turn him over this way 
we already have these wing pieces out. And then we need to take the fusion cannon and using this peg hole right here in his back, we're going to peg the fusion cannon in like this. I do believe, I just want to make sure before I uh, say things, uh, fold that in, those, that up, yes, yes. And yeah, boom, in the end here we have Megatron in his Cybertronian, I guess, jet mode. Maybe a couple of minor things that I gotta clean up, but this is basically it. Like, I don't think I quite have this arm in all the way. Make sure that those feet are in. Uh, and I'll say this, great transformation to get here. A lot of moving parts, but also very simple, very easy. I'm gonna say that the transformation for this is much like Optimus, like it's like a 9.75, it's excellent. The guy was getting about a seven and a half, we said. I think he can eke out an eight, maybe even an 8.25, but the weak hips really don't help this guy. And the stronger one is definitely Optimus. As a two pack though, Battle Begins is pretty great. You were able to get both Optimus and Megatron uh, at the same time. Granted, the scale's definitely off, certainly for Megatron, as he should be, like, bigger than Optimus. I think if you are, like, a mainline animated collector, I feel like, if and if you're a scale junkie, I feel like the best ways to go would be the Voyager Optimus and the Leader Class Megatron. Or, if you want their Cybertronian modes, then the Deluxe Cybertronian mode Optimus and the Voyager Class uh, Cybertronian mode Megatron. Neither of these are scaled right, but you know what? They pair well and they look great together. I think this is the best fusion cannon of them all. Uh, if for nothing else, the simplicity of how it fits on his arm. I would even go as far as to say that I think this is a perfect set if, if Megatron's hips didn't have the issues that they have. I think that's a super big shame. Fun fact, by the way, before we get out of here and I give a final overall score for both of these guys. This battle would actually never have happened on the show because this Cybertronian mode never battled this Earth mode. Go figure. Nice homage to both, though. This guy was the stronger at an overall score of about a 9.5 or whatever it was, 9.75, something like that. This guy's about an 8.5. I think overall the set is about an 8.5, maybe a 9. It's a great set. The only gripe, the only weakness, other than out of scale, for me anyway, would be the hips of Megatron. And I suppose, if you really want to nitpick, the battle damage. Though, usually, I don't really notice that. Make of that what you will, my friends. Great set, but not perfect. And here we are once again, and here they are. So let's start with Megatron. Uh, no, actually, let's start with Optimus. So I think the Optimus is really good. It has the most cartoon accurate battle axe that we have in any of the releases. Uh, admittedly, the vehicle shouldn't have red hair, should be black, and the smokestacks, they are also incorrect. Um, it's a bit of an adaptation of the Cybertronian mode transformation. It's not the same thing, but there's definitely a lot of nods to that in this. I don't even mind the battle damage, though it does make it a little bit asymmetrical, so if that's going to bother you, this might not be the Optimus for you. I'm glad he has a face-plated face for battle, and overall, I kind of like the proportions, the stability, and the articulation here. It's a solid, if not slightly stylized from the animation version of Optimus Prime in his Earth mode. Then we get to Megatron. I think that this fusion cannon, as simple as it is, is probably the best, certainly with the way that it simply just plugs into his forearm. I like the alt mode here, um, but I also liked it with the Voyager. The transformation scheme here is not like the Voyager, actually it's quite different, and I would argue that this is even more intuitive and easy than the Voyager. Uh, the Voyager is a little more involved, but both pull off the alt mode, I think, rather successfully. In the robot, uh, in robot mode, I don't really like the pink for the battle damage, but it's not a huge deal breaker. I overall do like the robot mode aesthetic. The only real problem here is that compared to Optimus, this probably should have been Voyager size, right, for scale. But taking that out of it, if you're cool with kind of these two smashing up against each other, then the only real weakness here is the hips. The hips are really, really, really weak on this guy. They would have to be thickened up or something because with the weight of his fusion cannon, he just can't hold a pose well at all. This is a really fun two-pack. It has its issues, it is not perfect, but it is a fun two-pack. And if you are somebody who at the time, or maybe even now, 
enjoys animated and you're on a budget um, and you couldn't say get the legacy animated Optimus and wait for what I assume will be an updated version of Megatron at some point, then you know what? Going back and kind of getting these as a two for one, not a bad way to go. Are they perfect? No. Are they fun and functional? Yes. Are they going to be for everyone? No. Might they be for you? I don't know. How about you let me know what you think about this two-pack? I appreciate you guys coming by, giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we have to offer to you through spring or of course. Hit the join button at any given time and become a channel member. While you are at it, hit the subscribe button, please and thank you. Stick around, have some fun with us here on the channel. And don't forget, not for a moment, not for a second, that somehow, some way, each and every single day, you do make a difference in the world. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights, at the stop motion premieres, or the old fashioned way, right here, inside the videos.